All right. Since the, the first half of the thing, uh, it's only audio. Uh, the wrong screen was being recorded. I'm just going to do the module thingy for something like a car in two seconds one more time. So we have it over here because it's for the workshop. It's important to know. And then after that, we're gonna, I'm going to explain what the workshop is. And after explaining what the workshop is, I'm going to do a little bit of programming for you of explaining the encapsulation. It is not part of what we need to learn now, but I just want to show you how simple everything is. Okay, so, <clears throat> uh, so as I was telling you to create a module, as soon as you want to create a module, I'm going to give you an example for a car. If I want to create a module for a car, what I will do, first I will create a header file. You guys are going to go perfect because this is the third time that I'm telling you. Okay, so first you're going to create a new item, create a header file, name the object, name the module, car, not gar, uh, car.h. <clears throat> then as soon as you open that one, you start the header file with, if not define, Seneca, underline, you put the name of the header file, separate it, uh, removing the dot and putting dash instead. Then copy the first line, paste it on second one, and replace the second, if not defined, to define. Then write a namespace for Seneca, because we are writing in Seneca. When you're listening to the other audio, you know what I mean. And that becomes your empty header file. Save that. Go to source files. Add new item. Call that. Make that a C++ file. And then put name it uh, uh, car.cpp. In that one, you only include the car.h. And then you say namespace Seneca like that. So <clears throat> all the code that you're writing functions, everything for your CPP file goes in here. All the prototypes and everything that you go over here. Any other compiler design that start, compiler command that start with hashtag goes over here. So compiler stuff go up there. Your uh, header file stuff comes over here. And that's what it is. So before you do anything for every module, you do this. Now, what is our... Uh, Workshop. Workshop one. What do we do in workshop one? Workshop one is this. So you don't have it yet. It's in dev. I'm going to post it in workshop. It's going to come up soon. But um, I'll go to workshop one over here. This is what workshop one is. <clears throat> so in workshop one, you have uh, in part one, I'll give you one program fully implemented and, and, and prepared and done in one file. You can actually compile and run it and it works perfectly, so you see how it works. Essentially, it's a statistic program thingy. So what it does, uh, it, uh, it's a, it, it draws graphs based on samples. So you give it five different samples, it puts them all together, creates a uh, 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 bar chart of the samples. Um, let me just... Uh... Now, the DIY section. The DIY section of the workshop uh, is the part that it's kind of do-it-yourself type of thing, and it's very open-ended. So what you do in here, first of all, you bring the I.O. and the graph modules from the lab to DIY. You're going to reuse those things, okay? And you have to hack the print graph function. When I say hack, hacking essentially means you have a source code of a function, you add some features to it so it becomes suitable to what you want to use. So you're going to do some modifications. How to do it? Your choice. Okay? All the tools are in I.O. so you can use the tools. For example, in here I am printing an integer within a width. Like you put percent %5d so it prints the integer in five spaces in C language. I haven't taught you yet how to do that with C out. So I wrote a function for it in I.O. So I.O. has a function, you give it an integer, and you give it a width, it prints that integer within a width. Okay, so you can use that one to do all these things, okay? So <clears throat> you have a structure over here, that SD mark goes to SD mark. Uh, it is already in SD mark file. When you look at it, it's going to be there. Uh, 
You're going to have a file module. It's fully implemented and everything. I didn't want to take you through the hassle of remembering how the files work in C language. So, but you have to understand how it works. So go through it and see how it works and learn how it works because you have to use these functions. So the, uh, the file uh, module has all the uh, things that you need to read from a file. So what's going on? This is how it works. The DIY section has a structure called STMark. Now the STMark structure over there holds three things. The name, the surname, and the mark student received. Okay? And it's comma separated in a file. And I gave you three different files with three different sites to test it on. Okay? One of them has 40 records. The other one has 70 records. The other one has 600 records. So my file module is already capable of reading all those comma separated value and fill it in an array of SD marks. It does it. You don't need to do anything. So it does that for you. So what you do using that, you open the file and you fill uh, an array of SD marks. That becomes the data you are supposed to work on. Then comes your responsibility. Your responsibility would be to have 10 samples, an array of 10 integers. And in the first one, you put the number of students who got from 91 to 100 in their mark. In the second one, you put the students who have from 81 to 90. And you keep going down, and the last one has from 0 to 10. You extract from that array of structures exactly who got how much. Uh, how, many, how many students got plus 90, how many students got plus 80, how many students, yada, yada, yada. After doing that, and this is the structure of the file. So the file is like this. That's the name, last name, and, OK? Uh, and this is the tester for it that actually tests it and shows you how it works. So, so I wrote a unit test for the file so you can execute it and see how it works. And these are all done. Then you need to add a CPP file for your stmark.h header file and convert it to a module. So your stmark becomes a module, and that's your responsibility. In that, I only need one function, because I am using that. The function that I have is called print report and receives a file name. In that function, you are supposed to use my file module, extract all the information from the file, and put it in an array of students, and find the samples. After doing that, you are to give those samples that I wrote over here, number of students, yada, 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 exactly the same, to the graph. But the difference is that you have to hack the graph to print these things in front of the, the bars. So 100, 90, 80. So this is your job. And then after that, you have to sort that array descending with the marks. So in a descending format, you're going to show all the marks like this right down to zero. And you're done. OK? Now, I'm going to see how good you are into modularizing stuff if you only do everything in this one function. That sucks. It means you didn't learn much in IPC. OK? But if you write five different functions and each one has a responsibility, and you use those five functions, and they are called in this one function, good job. Now I know what, what you have learned in IPC. So it's kind of tell me how well you know IPC 144. OK? So that's your responsibility. All I need is this. This is the only mandatory function. And this style of commenting in front of a function, you see that? This kind of uh, commenting does this. If I, let me come back to what we had in here. Whoops, not that. So say I have something like this. I have a car that's a car dot h, and in car dot h I have uh, a struct for a car. Uh, let's just not do the car. I'm going to do the teacher because we talked about it. It's better. So I'm going to go to the teacher. I'm going to create a struct. 
for the teacher. Okay. <clears throat> we said teacher has a name. So I'm going to say character name. What is the maximum size for the name? 30. So we put 51. Okay. Uh, then uh, the next one is the subject they teach. We are doing in Seneca. Subject is OOP244. Six. So it needs seven to hold that, right? That's the string. I'm going to say character subject. I'm going to put over here seven. <clears throat> For how good they teach, uh, what do I do? What do I do for, for how good they teach? What variable? Pardon me? An integer. So an integer for uh, rating, right? So and the rating is, will be, what are the limits for it? Zero to? Really? Ten. Come on. Nobody's that pretty. Oh, this is 98 or 97. Like, even ten is too much. Five is more than enough. Anyway, so I'll go over here. Ten. 0 to 10, int grading, we're going to use the grading as we do in, uh, not int grading, I'm going to do care grading. So if it sucks in grading, we're going to give him an F. <laughs> if he's good in grading, we're going to, like, okay, we're going to give him a D. Like, not okay, like, kind of. And when, he, when he's an A, it means that person is a very good grader. So grading. I'm going to say same as a grade, which is F to A. F and D to A. OK? <clears throat> First of all, there is a universal way of setting these things to a safe thing, to, a, to zero, default them. OK? I, I tell you that right off the bat from the first session. If you want things to be empty, zero, all you need to do, it is a new thing in, in, in C++. When I say new thing, I mean years, OK? It's not like yesterday, all right? It's an empty curly bracket. It doesn't matter what is the type. What do you have? You put an empty curly bracket in front of it. That's polymorphic. It sets it to default. So this will be no, this will be no. All the characters in this one will be zero. All the characters in this one will be zero. Simple as that. OK? So anytime you want to set something to its default state, you put an empty curly bracket in front of it. Done. Are we good? OK. So that's that. Now, let's say I want to display this teacher. OK? Let's say I want to display this teacher. For that, I'm going to pause and resume. If I was in IPC144, first of all, I have a teacher over here, right? If I wanted to actually show the teacher, what I would have over here would be void, something like set teacher, correct? And I would pass a teacher to it. So I would say over here, teacher pointer T, OK? Now, in C++, because it's an object-oriented language, when you create a structure, the structure automatically becomes a type. You don't need to write a struct in front of it anymore. Got it? Yes. String? What? String object? <coughs> what kind of string? C++ string? No. C++ string, OOP345. I don't want to spoon for you. You have to first. We are teaching in a way, so you learn how to build the engine first, then you're going to write the car. So we are using plain C strings. No object, no string object of C++ will be used in this semester, apart from one small occasion. I want you to do hardcore programming. I don't want you to do easy stuff. Easy stuff comes in 3, 4, 5, okay? Not now, okay? So we have to hardcore build everything yourself. OK, so but thank you for the question. OK, so the next thing I need to do is to print this the, the teacher, right? So I'm going to go void, void, uh, print teacher. And because I don't want to change it, I'm going to say const teacher 
pointer T. So these are the two things I want to create, right? Are we okay with this? Any problem? I am doing C. This is a bad way. This is not object oriented. So now, the good thing is that one of the good things about ID is that I'm going to go in the screwdriver thingy and I'm going to say create definition in teacher.cpp. Poof! It creates it over there for me. So I don't have to do it. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Create the definition over there and done. So the two definitions are created over there. I'm going to set it to be the format that I have. So I have a set teacher and I have a print teacher. So these are the two things that I, that I want to do over here, right? Okay? So now if I want to print a teacher, what do I do? I'm just going to print the teacher like this. Oh, that's set the teacher. Print the teacher is here. Yeah. There you go. I'm going to print the teacher like this. Of course, I'm going to use C out. So I'm going to come over here. And at the top, because this uh, is uh, IO stream, and I'm going to say use namespace STD. And now, another thing about about uh, regulations that we have in, in OP244. Because we are dealing with object orientation now, there is a rule that any variable inside the structure must start with the prefix M underline to have an emphasis that this is a member variable, not a regular one. So all these M name, M subject, M thing, M grading, all these things, uh, they, have, they should have M underline at the beginning. Get used to it, and you have to do it for every single thing. These are uh, coding rules that we have to follow in uh, OP244 and OP345. So now, as you see, it's going to print the teacher for me. Set the teacher. How does it work? It sets the teacher. So I'm going to... Uh, set the values of the teacher, but set teacher needs more stuff. It just doesn't need the teacher. I have to actually pass the values so it can set the teacher. So only the teacher is not enough. I have to actually put all the stuff that I want to set the teacher to, and this one is care, right? So I have to have all those things added to it. So I have to pass all those things and then say, set the teacher. I'm going to do the same thing over here. This is all C, IPC144. I'm not adding anything new. And then for the code for it to be able to actually set these things up, I'm going to use my good old string header file over here, which is going to, which is going to, Sorry. Control C. All right, which is going to be as follows. Now, I string copy is a string header file. What do I do? I'm going to go over here, say include. We said it's coming from C language. I don't do string.h. I go C string. And that becomes the header file. No more dot H's after the thing. Okay? And now I have a set teacher and I have a print teacher. So I can actually go to my main, that is prg.cpp. In here, I can actually include, include teacher.h. Now the teacher is access accessible over here. And I can go in my main, create teacher, set teacher, and print teacher, which is going to be as follows. Okay? But the problem is that it's not ac accessing it. What the hell? Didn't it just include it, the teacher thingy? Why? What's going on? Okay? So, first of all, let me just fix this. So let's say that's a B. Okay? This, that's a B. Okay? 
So let's do it that way. Why? Because it is in the namespace, it is in the namespace Seneca, correct? And I don't have a Seneca namespace here. Should I put my name main inside the Seneca namespace? The answer is no. Main is using all your, all your files. It's not implementing them. Therefore, your main, like the one that is using the standard namespace, is going to be using namespace Seneca. And now everything becomes available. Got it? And now if I run this program, I'm going to have build errors. What are the, oh, SDR copy is not safe. Uh, we have to have this. Uh, let me bring this over here. We have to define this. For now, add this at the top of every single file you are having not to get this error. You have to have a define over here. So define, I'm telling the compiler to shut up. I know. Okay, that's what, oh, it's not here actually. It's in the control X. It's in teacher.cpp because I'm using string header file. Okay, so run it and we're going to see that it's going to actually show it and it's going to be like that, okay? And we're going to stop right here. The next day you are coming in, you're going to see the object-oriented version of this. If you want, you can watch the video of the other class, which I actually went through the whole example. Over there, I didn't do it like a module. Over there, I did it in one file. So you are doing, having the kind of a higher version of it. So the next day we are coming in, please remind me of Fardat. We want the object-oriented teacher, and we'll continue after that, okay? Questions? Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do it right now. There you go. So just to make sure that I'm not going to forget and you have quick access to it, I'm just going to go right into it now. I'm going to go to OOP244, and in here I'm going to say, now it's actually showing more options. I, I was happy for a second. So I'm going to say commit, and I simply say all over here. Automatically it's going to pick up the good ones because I have a good dot get ignore, and I'm going to say January 12, OOP244, uh, ZAA stuff is here, and I'm committing and pushing, and done. It's up in a website. You can actually t take a look at it now. That's the beauty of Git. Please keep using it, as I do every day. Have a beautiful day, and I'll see you soon.